Hi everyone and welcome to The Book Refuge and it's that time again I can make another historical romance recommendations video. So I've been saving up all my reads from this year so far and I finally have a good stack. I think I have eight historical romances to recommend to you today. Uh, about half of them are from authors that I talk about really frequently and then about half of them are people that I just started this year either based on recommendations from you or from the booktube community as a whole. So let's go ahead and get started with we'll kind of go like chronologically from when I read these this year and as you know if you've been following me at all. This year has really been the year of Lisa Claypies for me and I have just went through mostly all of her like newer books i'm about to start on the older ones and hopefully eventually i will do a historical romance author deep dive on her she just has a lot more books that i haven't read yet so it's a little bit more of an endeavor for me to get to than julia quinn was who had already read all of her books but i've talked about these books in quite a few recommendation videos already for different tropes or whatever so i wanted to bring up one that i haven't mentioned as much but i still really enjoyed so the one i'm bringing to you as my lisa claypaz recommendation is tempt me at twilight so this one is about poppy hathaway she's the second youngest daughter if you don't know about the hathaways it's this family of five siblings who they've lost their parents and in the beginning of the series, their oldest sister is really trying to keep everyone together because the um, the oldest son, well, the only son, he is a bit of a recluse and dealing with some emotional damage at the beginning of the series. But this one is about Poppy and she is in love with this one guy and they've been writing love letters back and forth. And then Harry Rutledge, who owns a uh, huge hotel in London, um, someone that we have interacted with um, in different scenarios and in previous series of the book, because this series comes after the Wallflower series. He, he ends up in possession of one of her love letters and he doesn't think that she should be with that guy basically he decides that he likes her she is trying to save a ferret one of beatrice's ferrets and she ends up in one of his secret uh back way passages in his hotel and he's just really taken with her and he decides that he wants her so he manipulates things so that she has to marry him and so this sets their relationship off on a bad foot because poppy finds out and so she tells him she's like i'll still marry you because i don't want to cause any waves or ruin my reputation but i'm never gonna love you because of what you did and of course when we throw down an ultimatum like that we know there's gonna be love because also it's a romance novel so this is Ugh, it's just so good because I love that clash of wills. I love that Harry, he is a villain in the first half of this book. Um, he reminds me a lot of uh, the devil. He reminds me of, of St. James, or I mean St. Seb Sebastian, sorry. In that way where he feels like a villain to us and we don't understand how he can be redeemed. Because this guy that he prevents Poppy from marrying, there's nothing wrong with him. He's a nice guy. He's just a little bit like nervous to ask his father if he can marry Poppy. So he's a little bit weak spined, but he's not a bad guy. It's just that Harry wants her more and he goes after her and gets her. And I have a soft spot for that, of course. And I just really enjoyed it. I love that Poppy, she, she, challenges him she demands respect she demands to be treated like a wife she demands all these things but also she's still kind of punishing him a little bit as well because he tricked her and now she's in what she views as a loveless marriage and harry doesn't care if she loves him or not he just wants her to be a dutiful wife and i just love that clash of wills i love how they fight it out and it just makes the love that much sweeter once it happens 
Let's go to one that was a new one to me. So this one was suggested to me by one of you on one of my previous historical romance videos, and that is The Grand Sophie by Georgette Hare. This is a bit more of a classic historical romance. I listened to it on um, Scribd, and I will be honest, I was tricked. I didn't realize that this was a abridged version, so I'm working on getting an, a full copy of it, but it is sold out on all the places I'm looking unless I'm willing to buy a hardcover for $40. But this book is about a girl named Sophia, who her father works for the government and he's going to be sent to Brazil for a certain amount of time. And she is going to stay with her cousins. So her cousins, there's a family, there's about seven of them, I think. And the oldest son is really kind of running the house because his father isn't really responsible with money and he is really kind of the one... Um, in control of everything but Sophia is coming to stay with them and she is just so eccentric because she's been traveling with her father she brings a monkey her first day she like brings a monkey for the children um, it's so cute and this oldest cousin he's actually engaged to marry this really prim and proper woman who she's a little bit of a spinster but she's from a really wealthy family and she's very like buttoned up and sophisticated and she's just very threatened by Sophie right away and so Sophie goes about making everyone's life better she seems so just crazy and wild but she's that kind of crazy and wild where she has thought things out three or four steps ahead and so she just comes in and is a whirlwind to their lives and it is so beautiful and exciting and it actually ends up being a love story between her and her cousin which you can tell that this is an older romance when it's about the cousin but it's very Jane Austen I mean Jane Austen liked to set her hair once up with her cousins it just happened but this one is a very good starting place for historical romance I'd say again it's very along the lines of Jane Austen but a little bit more up to like the action there's some action in this book um, the storyline is really fun and uh, but there's no like steam really in it at all but it's still a really sweet love story and the family is just so cute like I love them I love them so much so let's go into another author that I like so I have two Eloise James to suggest to you the first one is the continuing of a series I've talked about this series in previous historical romance videos this one is the newest book in the wilds of window window castle and so this one say yes to the duke it's kind of shiny here this is about Viola Astley who's actually the stepdaughter of the duke um, the way that this family was merged is that both of them this um, man and woman they both had children beforehand they had one of them her husband had died and him his wife had run off with um a like a poor farmer or whatever and they came together and they have this blended family and they also have kids together so viola she's not considered a wild because she is one of the like the duke is her stepfather but he loves her just the way that he loves any of his children and she's actually the same age as one of his daughters so they kind of like come out together well Miss Viola is very shy painfully shy and on what is going to be her debut she catches a man and a woman having a tryst and the man thinks that the woman set this up and is just furious and he freaks out and yells at her that they're trying to entrap him and he's like well lady it's not gonna happen you I'd rather you have a ruined reputation than marry you and Viola is just shocked and frightened and she ends up like throwing up on this guy's shoes and running away well fast forward a few years later she is not wanting to like be out in public anymore and she ends up kind of falling for this vicar in town because she thinks that if she married a vicar she would get to have a peaceful life and not have to be in the spotlight foolish foolish girl because a vicar he's like always going to visit people and being around people but anyway then we enter um the duke of winter who happens to be the same man from a few years earlier who was almost caught in a tryst but he doesn't remember he doesn't remember viola until he hears her later on tell about the story about this man who like 
shocked and scared her or whatever. But it's a really beautiful romance. He decides that he loves her and he goes about trying to woo her even though she wants to. Like she marrying a duke is like the last thing she would want to do because she would have to like be a proper you know, she would have to stay in the public eye. So he has quite an uphill battle to try to convince her to be with him. But I really liked it. Um, some people, I'm just warning you, some people don't like it because they think she she gets over her shyness and her, like, social anxiety too easily. Um, I can see that. So I'm not telling you it's not true. However, I always took it more as, like, she needed the confidence and she needed the right person in her life to encourage her. And so I feel like that happens when she has Devin in her life. So I didn't have a problem with it, but I can understand if it's an issue for some people. The next Eloisa James I have for you is My American Duchess. So this book is a standalone by Eloisa James. Um, this one was so fun. So this one is the Duke of Trent meets this American named Mary Pelford at a ball. They end up both out on the balcony together. They have a little chit chat. It's really sweet and they both kind of take a shining to each other right away. And he decides that he likes this American and he's looking for a duchess anyway. So he's like, man, maybe this is why I haven't liked any of the women in society. Maybe I'm looking for this American Duchess and I didn't know it. Well, it turns out that just a few minutes before she meets this man, she was proposed to by his brother. And now they don't get along, so he'd never met this girl that his brother was courting and she'd never met the brother. And the other thing about Mary is she's actually been in had two other proposals that didn't work out. So she's accepted the Duke's brother and even though she kind of immediately regrets that because she starts finding things out about this younger brother that just are not good like they are red flags all over the flags are just flying and but she just can't break this engagement again or her family like will just lose all face and it just won't be good and so she knows that she needs to keep it even though she doesn't want to even though she would like to bow out and maybe pursue this relationship with Trent, she can't be the one to break this engagement. And especially when the younger brother gets wind that Trent might like Mary, who him and his brother don't get along, there's no way that he's gonna break the engagement so that his brother can have what he wants. So we're in a bit of a pickle. It's very fun how it gets figured out. And I really enjoyed this book. Um, it's a bit of a chunker too, and I really like that. I like when once things get figured out by who this girl's going to marry, that we have some time afterwards to figure out their relationship. And I really like that. I love that stuff. This also has one of my favorite tropes in it that I'm not going to tell you. But if you want to ping me separately or message me, I'll tell you what the trope is that I love. So, love this one. Then we have a new release I want to talk about, which everyone on booktube I feel like is talking about my romance group. A lot of people read this book this month and really liked it. This is a new release by Sophie Jordan. It's called The Virgin and the Rogue. It's actually the sixth book in a series, but they all kind of like um, stand out together or like it's okay, whichever one you read first. Um, I actually have since I read this, read two other books in the series, and this is still my favorite so far. Um, it's the only one I'm talking about today, but this one is about Charlotte who in the beginning of the book, her sister is an apothecary and she makes Charlotte a potion to help with her cramps, which her sister has done for her before. And they just kind of help her during her period. Well, this time her sister was trying a new formula and it, she actually created an aphrodisiac instead. And so, um, this man named Kingston, who is the stepbrother of her brother-in-law, he is at the house and he has kind of a contentious relationship with his family and her and him like don't get along right off the bat. And then um, after she's taken this potion, she runs into him in the hall and she basically starts humping him against the wall. And he doesn't do anything. He definitely doesn't stop her. That's true. But he doesn't engage. There is no P to the V at this point, but she does literally ride him to orgasm in the hallway. 
And then she is horrified that she did this. And she knows that she must have been drugged somehow. But the tr trouble is, is like Kingston doesn't believe her. He just thinks she was really into him. <laughs> so now he starts to kind of pursue her and try to get her to admit that it wasn't a potion that made her feel this for him. Well, she's already engaged to someone else. But he's not the greatest guy. When her family was in troubled times, he actually broke his engagement with her. And it wasn't until her sister married a duke and they had money again that this guy re-engaged his intentions with her. So he's kind of a weak-spined guy and we don't really like him. But she is in this engagement with him and she cares about him a lot. So it enters um, a pretty interesting situation. One thing I will say for Sophie Jordan and kind of the reason I didn't enjoy the other books in the series as much is she really has this pattern of it's all build up and then everything gets solved in the last chapter and I'm not a fan of that in historical romances. I'm really not. I really like us to have a resolution but yet still have things to work out. Um, which is why, like I said, I really like that El Eloisa James does that really well. She lets the couples usually get together midway through the book and then we have time figuring everything out. And that's something I'm noticing with, I've read three of her books now, and I'm not a huge fan of it. However, in this one, because there is kind of that like sexual spark happening earlier on, um, I was able to kind of like enjoy that part of it. But this one was really fun. You probably heard a lot about it. You can totally read this ad to stand alone. It's really good. Then I have a Julia Quinn, which this is the, her newest release came out earlier this year also it's the last one that's been announced for a while I don't even know if she has a newest series up yet I think she's kind of focused on the Netflix series coming out first which don't worry I of course will be reviewing I'm waiting for a trailer to come out because it's supposed to come out this fall and there's just nothing stupid Rona ruins everything so this book is the final book in the Bridgerton prequel series so this one is actually about Georgie Bridgerton so she's the youngest Bridgerton and it's about the youngest Rokesby so the Bridgerton prequel series is also called the Rokesby series and the Rokesby's is a family that lives next door to the Bridgertons and they've kind of been like matching up as we go so Georgie she has been compromised by this horrible person. This horrible person basically kidnapped her to try to force her into marrying him because she is going to get a, you know, pretty big dowry. She's a Bridgerton. They're pretty wealthy. And she's also the goddaughter of the Rokesby's. So um, when she has been compromised in this way and is going to be either have to be a spinster for real or marry this person who tried to assault her. She ended up beating him up, which is hilarious. Um, her godfather calls his son Nicholas home, who Nicholas is actually going to school to be a doctor. He's the youngest Rokesby, so he has a little more freedom in life than like the older brothers did. And his father tells him he should propose to Georgie because she needs him and it's a much better option for her to marry her friend to marry her neighbor to marry her I mean god brother as it were no I'm just kidding it isn't weird like that at all and so he comes home he does not want to do this he is going to school he's still pretty young he doesn't want to have to you know have his attention split between a wife and work he thought he would marry 10 years from now when he was already an established doctor and Georgie doesn't want to take his career away from him. She resents that she has to marry anyone because she was forced into this situation. But then when she gets to spend time with Nicholas, there is a spark for both of them. And he ends up wanting to do this. And it's just adorable. And it's great because she's very interested in science, in his doctoring. And so they both end up being interested in that together. And it's very interesting there are a couple other cool things in here so georgie actually has asthma so we get to see kind of what having asthma looked like in the past when an asthma attack could kill you um because there isn't the medicine to save you from it also we have a virgin hero and heroine in this book which i love because a virgin hero just doesn't get done very often and i just loved it i love 
when it's awkward wedding night for both of them and it just ends up being the sweetest, cutest thing ever. I love it. I love it. So this was a really fun read. Then I have The Viscount and the Vixen by Lorraine Heath. This is actually the third book in the Hellions of Havisham series, which I've talked about in a lot of other recommendation videos I've done. But the Hellions of Havisham, this is the third book. And this is actually about the son of, Vis of uh, Viscount Loxley, um, who he is the one who actually took in the Hellions of Havisham. So there was these three boys, these twin boys and this other man that he took in when their parents died in a in a train accident um like 20 some years ago and what we have in this case is that this woman named what's her name portia she answered an ad to marry the viscount so he is like 60 years old and crazy everyone considers him crazy because since his wife died literally at the birth of his son he has been a little bit cracked and all he wants to do is like be with his wife but he stayed to take care of his son to take care of these other boys but he's always been just a little bit cracked up up top okay so he decides though that he uh wants to find a wife for his son so he sets this up where he pretends to be um looking for a wife and so he gets Portia to come and is going to marry him knowing that his son won't let him be taken advantage of and that his son will step in and marry this woman now his son is afraid of loving someone because he's seen his father go crazy with love I love I love this trope. I love this trope that you're literally afraid to love because you think you'll love someone too much. Just, oh, it just gets to me. It just gets me in the feelings and it's so good. And so these two get married and it's the Viscount totally set it up, totally set it up. And the thing is, is that Portia wanted to marry the Viscount, the old man. She wanted to marry him because she is pregnant she was a mistress of a man and he wanted her to get rid of the baby and she refused to get rid of the baby so she wanted to marry this old man make sure that she had sex with him and then pass the child off as his but she didn't want this child to be the heir to the viscount so the thing is now that she's married to the son she's going to be passing her child off as a bastard and she didn't want to do that. I mean, as a bastard heir, like she knew she would be foisting a bastard onto this person, but now she's married to the son. And not only is she married to the son, he's handsome and charming and is willing to love her. And so we're in this situation where the bomb is going to go off. Like she's going to end up having this baby early. Is she going to be able to fake it? Is he going to believe her? Is he going to stop loving her when this happens? What is going to happen? And Lorraine Heath, man, she just knows how to rip your heart out. She knows how to set up the situation so you love everyone involved and you are scared for everyone involved. She's done it in this entire series and it's beautiful and the way that this works out. Also, there's an epilogue that's really a conclusion to the whole series um, that gives some peace to the old Viscount and I, we I wept. I absolutely wept. I thought the story was over. I thought we were getting a beautiful little epilogue. And then we find out how this older gentleman gets peace. And I wept. I literally called my sister when it was done. And I was like, I just need to cry about this historical romance with you. And I know you don't know what I'm talking about. And I know you don't care. But I just need you to validate my feelings for a couple minutes. And because my sister's amazing, she did. And this book is amazing. So the last book I want to talk about real quickly, I, I just read, and that is The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. So I heard about this book in both the Faded Maids podcast and the Smart Women Read Romance podcast, and I knew I had to have it. So this is about a historical romance hero who has autism, and he has been put in an asylum for years. He sees his father murder his mother, and because he already has... Um, these certain characteristics of autism which 
they think are unnatural and odd, his father is able to say that he's crazy and put him in an asylum. When his father dies, his older brothers spring him from the asylum, but he has always looked at as a little bit odd. He can hear a song and reproduce it perfectly. He's great with numbers. He has an eidetic memory. And so his older brother kind of uses him for his skills, not in a cruel way, but in a practical way of, well, my brother has these skills and I'm going to take advantage of them. And then Ian meets the widow Beth, who she used to be married to a vicar. She's been a widow for a long time. She came into some money. So she is a well-established widow and Ian saves her from a fortune hunter and then he decides that he wants her and so he goes about pursuing Beth and it's a new feeling for him he doesn't believe he can love again one of my favorite tropes when a hero doesn't believe he can love especially when it's someone who is neuroatypical and doesn't realize that they can still have feelings um, I've read a few books like this recently um, Nino shout out to Nino from Twisted Emotions I love that and so it's just so beautiful. And there's also, this is a very serious one. A lot of these ones I read are more comedies, um, but this one is more serious. There is a murder investigation going on. Um, a detective believes that Ian murdered someone and he really has a hard on for the McKenzie family and he's trying to prove that they're murderers somehow. And so there's a lot of tension with that and with Beth trying to find out who really did murder this woman because he, she knows that Ian didn't do it, but for some reason Ian is being very protective of this and won't help her find out who did it. So it's very interesting. It's a very intriguing story. And Ian is one of my book boyfriends now. He's perfect. He's precious. I want to wrap him up and love him at all costs. He's amazing. So there you go. There is some historical romance recommendations. It felt so good to make this video. Um, you guys are always asking for these. I try to make them also with other tropes. You know, I try to put historical romances in with everything, but it just takes me a while to read enough and enough that I love to make another video for. But as always, please put your recommendations down below. The recommendations I get off of these videos are what fill this shelf. Let's see if I can do it. This whole shelf here is filled with books from your recommendations for historical romance. So please send them to me. The more of them I get, the more of them that I can recommend. As always, now I am an Amazon affiliate at like influencer. So if you check out the link to my storefront down below, you can purchase these books through Amazon and I get a small commission for it. Um, you don't have to, don't worry about it. Also, someone asked me, um, sometimes the books linked down below are like the hardcover or the audio or whatever. When I'm building the storefront, um, I just put the title of the book in there. Any version of the book that you get, once you've clicked my link, I get a small commission off of it. So you can pick whatever you want. You can pick the ebook, the audio book, whatever. You don't have to buy the version that I've put in there. Um, you can pick whatever you want and I still get something out of it. But anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I put up new videos three to four times a week and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye.